Okay, good afternoon everyone. Just very briefly, I'm going to tell you a little bit about uh, my VIC-20 and uh, some of the things that I've done with it. Um, I haven't really done any major modifications that would affect the performance of the VIC much. Uh, mostly what I've done is preventative maintenance because after all it is a 30 to 35 year old machine. So. Uh, you know, sometimes we need to be uh, a little cautious. But uh, what we've got here, um, it uh, essentially is, is just what it looks like. It's a fire engine red VIC-20. Uh, my, uh, my son Vincent has a very nice VIC-20 on display over there and was using it pretty regularly until smoke came out of the keyboard one day. So we decided that we weren't going to use the nice VIC-20 as our daily driver. So. Uh, that being the case, I uh, went into our user group storage and had Robert help me pick out a VIC-20. He found a nice one for me and I said, no, no, I want the most horrible looking sunburned, yellow, nasty, brittle, falling apart VIC-20 I could get my hands on. And he looked at me kind of funny and we found the nastiest VIC-20 in storage. I decided it just needs a little love. So I took it apart. Uh, all the way down to the uh, bare plastic of the case. Um, I scrubbed it in the sink and took it outside, let it air dry, and then hit it with uh, some of that red spray paint that was meant for sticking to plastic patio furniture. Figured, uh, you know, gonna seal up and protect, you know, old brittle plastic, you may as well do it with a little bit of style, right? So. Uh, since then, we've put a fair amount of use on it. It's got some good scuff marks on it. It needs to be repainted, but I think I'm going to leave it the way it is because it's just love. But anyhow, uh, the brown keyboard looked a little strange against the red of the case, so I put the white keyboard from a spare 64C in there. And there it is. This is our daily driver VIC. So uh, when you take it apart, you know, like any VIC-20, you would just remove the three bottom screws. Okay, I've already got them taken out. You want to go ahead and open the lid. Got to be careful because the uh, the hinges on the plastic on the back are uh, usually pretty brittle due to the age. But okay, this is what we've got inside here. You can see I painted it inside and out. So even if you look down through the vents, it's all red. You don't see any of the white poking through anywhere except where I scuffed it and used it. But Okay, what we have in here, <clears throat> this is a uh, VIC-20 cost reduced model. It's the shorter board, uses fewer chips, uh, has the round power supply connector, so uh, same connector as a Commodore 64. Um, 
these do not have the internal power regulation like the original two-prong uh, power connector on the, Vic, uh, the first VIC-20s. Uh, sorry, we have some background Houston, noise. we have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, all right. So what we've got in here, I was, uh, I was having some problems with my CPU one day and uh, decided since it needed to be replaced, I was just going to go all out and do some preventative maintenance. So it was something that I wouldn't have to do again anytime in the immediate future. So um, underneath this heat sink right here, uh, you can't really see it, my apologies, but uh, we have a Rockwell uh, 65CO2 uh, rated for 4 megahertz running at the stock one megahertz of the VIC. So you can imagine uh, this chip never heats up. But because I'm paranoid, and just because you're paranoid doesn't mean somebody isn't out to get you, <laughs> I decided to heat sink it anyway. So I put the thermal paste on the top, and we've got a DIP40 heat sink on top of the uh, CPU that never heats up. OK. Um, I did at, uh, at first have some problems with the audio on this board, so I had Mr. Ray Carlson uh, fix this board for me. There was a component needed needed to be changed uh, right in here inside the uh, box for the uh, RF shielding. Uh, I wasn't getting any uh, audio out off the monitor port, so uh, once he fixed that, um, he did what he usually does on the VIC chip, as those tend to run really hot, he put a homemade uh, heat sink on there. And uh, I was going to take it out and uh, just put one of these heat sinks on there, but I thought, you know what, this one looks kind of cool. This, you know, it's kind of, you know, homebrew. So I just left it the way it was. But uh, um, any of the socketed chips I've tried to replace on general principle just because I can. Um, I've got uh, right here these uh, uh, the two uh, CIA chips, the uh, 6522s. These are not original MOS chips. These are you know for the I/O bus. These are Cinertech chips. They've been replaced once before. I actually didn't change these. These were in the Vic when I got them, but um, everything's working just fine. So the, and these chips really don't ever get hot anyway. So I kind of just left them the way they were. But rest assured, if one of these chips ever goes out and I have to replace it, I'm going to replace it with one of the Rockwell low power models and I'm going to put a heat sink on it. But we also have uh, something else I've done here, just as I said, for preventative maintenance. The ROM chips here, we've got the kernel ROM and the basic ROM. They're also socketed. Um, I've had these replaced with EEPROMs. I had uh, new copies burned for me into EEPROM. Nothing was wrong with my old ROM chips, but uh, I'm sure as many of you have experienced that uh, when ROM chips are decades old, once in a while they suffer from bit rot, or sometimes they'll just drop a data bit somewhere, and all of a sudden your machine doesn't boot up anymore. So since this wasn't going to be our nice original VIC, this is going to be one that uh, we're going to be putting some mileage on. I put uh, newer lower voltage, uh, not lower voltage, uh, lower amperage uh, EEPROMs in there. So once again, we have chips that run cooler than what a stock VIC-20 should run at. That is about it internally. I haven't done anything that would really affect compatibility or functionality apart from the 65CO2. Uh, Rockwell 65CO2s work just fine. Uh, they're pin compatible. They're, um, as I understand it, they are fully software compatible to uh, an original MOS 6502 as long as your software doesn't use illegal opcodes. A lot of software does. I haven't run into any problems with it yet, but as I said, um, this is not uh, the VIC that we're keeping nice and original. This is one just for playing around with. So. Um, hasn't let me down yet, but if I run into any problems, uh, I'll probably put a stock 6502 back in there and heat sink the daylight out of it. All right, um, that's about it for the internal mods on my VIC-20. I'm going to go ahead and close it up, all right, being very careful with those hinges as they, uh, yeah, doesn't want
Uh, it's not lined up just right, but that's all right. I'll put it in. All right, close enough for now. Okay, because we have the round power supply connector, uh, typical on a Commodore 64, uses some a power supply that's similar to a stock Commodore 64 power supply. Uh, problem is, stock Commodore 64 power supplies can be kind of flaky. So, um, I use this power supply here. This is actually, I don't even know where this case came from, but um, a friend to our user group built this power supply out of modern components and just put the cable from an original black 64 power brick on it. I was going to open this up and show you what the inside of the power supply looks like, but I've got some cracking in the plastic right here. I didn't want to force it. But again, runs a lot cooler than the stock Commodore power supply, and because it's made from modern components, it's a lot more stable, and you're less likely to have this thing go crazy one day and then slag some of your components on the inside. So, um, that is about it for our VIC-20. Not too much, uh, not too much uh, functionality-wise that I've done to it um, that would affect compatibility or operation. It's mainly just preventative stuff because this is the one that we put all of our mileage on, um, and uh, we tend to use big 20s in our house a little more than the 64, so that was kind of important. But uh, for now, that's about it. Um, underside, I probably should have shown you this first. Underside, a um, little scuffed up, like I said, but hey, love marks, right? I took the label off, and I put it back on while the paint was still tacky, so that's not coming off again. Um, and then I replaced the rubber feet with silicone feet, so uh, hopefully they'll last a little longer and not suffer from the uh, crumbling rot thing that rubber feet tend to do after uh, a number of years. And, being exposed to uh, temperature and humidity and things like that. But yeah, you can get those at, at Home Depot. They make them they're exactly the same shape as the ones that come on the VIC-20 and the Commodore 64. There we are. Replacement rubber feet can be acquired at Home Depot. Yep. You heard it here. Okay. Uh, anybody have any questions regarding any of the fun little things I've done to this poor thing? <laughs> I want to say this poor thing because it's not, uh, it doesn't look like a stock VIC-20, but it didn't look like a stock VIC-20 when I got it. So. Nothing lost, I think. You said you use the VIC-20 more than 64. What do you use for? What do we use the VIC-20 for? Well, um, tootling around in basic a lot. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Most of the things I do in, uh, I don't do a whole lot with basic, but most of the things I do are pretty small. They're pretty, you know, quick, onesie, twosie kind of tasks. So um, the VIC-20 is, is fine for that. and. Uh, one of the reasons why um, we also, you know, we play games and you know, mess around and do things like that. One of the reasons I was kind of, I put the mileage on the VIC-20 is because I also have, between my son and myself, we probably have seven or eight C64s and probably one or two of them work perfectly well. The rest of them are in various states of non-working status and because um, as I was showing some of these uh, chips on the inside that were uh, licensed by MOS um, to be produced by Rockwell and Cinertech, there are replacement chips for the VIC-20 that are out there available on the web by the thousands. Uh, we've got a gentleman over here that has uh, many thousands of uh, the Rockwell 6522's brand new old stock that he sells on eBay. They're uh, very readily and easily and inexpensively acquired, whereas the chips that go in the C64, like the 6510 CPU, uh, the, uh, the uh, 6581. Yeah, the 6581, of course, the SID in high demand. Um, the 6522s, I don't know if I call them CIA, I think they're VIA yeah. chips. They're yeah. VIA chips. The, the 1541. Yes, they're, they're, they're VIA uh, controllers. We have the ones uh, that go in the 64, the 6526, 
uh, is, I believe, the CIA. And it, those are not available anywhere. MOS was the only company that ever produced those. Um, I've, I shouldn't say they're not available anywhere. I did find them uh, from uh, electronic surplus suppliers in China, but they always want, you know, at least, oh, I don't know, six or eight dollars a chip for those things. And, you know, and they want a minimum order of, you know, 50 units or something. So it doesn't really make sense for you to plunk down, you know, three hundred dollars to you know, get a single C64 working or even half a dozen of them. You know what I mean? Um, so we kind of put any of the wear and tear on the VIC-20 that we can because the chips inside there are easier to come by. That's, that's mainly the reason. You know, when you sit it side by side with a 64, we're certainly not using it for the graphic or sound capability, it's just for some of the fun playing around. And uh, so my 64s, I use them for things that you can only do with a 64. If it's something that can do, you can do you know, either way, I tend to put the mileage on the VIC-20 because, like I said, a little easier to maintain. Have you thought about putting a computer saver inside the machine to uh, protect from any uh, high voltage uh, spiking from the power supply? Have I thought of putting a computer saver in there? I have. Uh, I've not gotten around to it. I was thinking one of the internal ones, um, but because I'm not handy with the soldering iron, I've been kind of hesitant because I'd have to, I'd have to uh, box this up and send it to Ray Carlson and have him install one. Or I could order the computer saver from him and then have to try to find someone to install it for me. Um, well, he does have external computer savers. Yes, I've got one of the external ones myself, but it kind of stays attached to my C64. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, I've, I've considered adding one in here. I just haven't gotten to it yet, but it, it's a definitely a good idea, even with a power supply like this one, which is much more stable than the Commodore original. You still have... You know, you still have room for uh, things to go wonky on. So, what about Jiffy DOS? Jiffy DOS? I don't really know Jiffy DOS, so I haven't. Uh, I've got Jiffy DOS for the Twenty. I just haven't put it in. Oh, uh, because I've been kind of hesitant there because I'm not very familiar with it. But uh, yeah, one of the things I've kind of got planned eventually. Uh, have you thought about putting in an S video mod from Ray Carlson? Ray Carlson S Video Mod. Um, I do have um, one of the drop in S Video uh, upgrades. I haven't put it in yet. Um, it doesn't require any soldering skills, but you know, it, it leads to having a cable that kind of hangs out the back somewhere. And I'm not sure if I really, I mean, yeah, I know, we're not keeping this thing perfect. I'm not sure if I want to drill an extra hole in the back, is the thing. So I may very well. Do have him do the internal S video mod to it, but uh, like I said, it's our it's the one we put the most mileage on. So I'm kind of hesitant to keep you know doing anything uh, anything to it that's going to affect the uh, you know I I don't want it, want it to be disruptive. Any, Any other questions? questions? No. Okay, well, I'll be here all weekend. If you uh, have any questions or if you want to see this thing in action, I'll be right over there. Okay, thanks, Louis. All right, thank you all.